it is time to dive on into Ghost Trick and fail at doing voices. It'll be great. It's great. It's fine. I got this. <laughs> it is time for ghosts and tricks and ghosts who do tricks and tricks done by ghosts, but not tricks eaten by ghosts. I don't think there's any tricks cereal in here. Which is a cereal for kids, not ghosts. I don't know why. Why am I like this? Oh no, that's right. Darn it, I think I loaded the wrong one. That's fine. As May reminds us, we are doing a stealth section, which is not my favorite thing that has ever happened, but we'll get a little warm up. We'll see if my brain does any better. Otherwise, I am not afraid to use chat hat and ask for help as needed. The detective told me to head for the spoon when I got back to the present. So here I am. Oh, it is stealth escort. Cause I don't have to be stealthy, but the escorting has to be stealthy. I guess that's the thing. Whew, I'm back. Thank goodness someone flushed his toilet. That was good timing. Now to use the cover of darkness to help the detective escape. But first I have to find him. I know where he is. It's prisoner C-74, secure the prisoner. He's so confused. I'm like, I don't know if we're ever gonna get an answer as to what was going on with this guy's head getting sections to be longer with this weird machine thing. I don't know what's going on. Hmm. It looks like there are hunters in this darkness. I hope they haven't found Detective Jode. All right. Wait, did I have a... I do have a thing. This is some true darkness. But luckily, darkness doesn't exist in the ghost world. I can make use of that fact to help me find the detective. Some people like having long heads. I guess so, but... That's really weird to have it suction cupped to make it longer. Like, it's just weird. See, it's, it's this is weird machine. I don't know. I don't know what it's doing, man. I don't know what it's doing. We'll find out or we won't. Oh, right. Huh? What's that red light? Hmm, it looks like the hunter's eyes glow red. I love that he's just a circle. With french fries for hair. Well, thanks for subscribing again, Chrono. Thank you for your support as always. Doesn't look like escape is going to be easy. All right. Hello, Jode. Ah, there you are. I was wondering what I was going to do. Are you the one who made that toilet bell ring? That's right, I still had another napkin lying around. Thanks to that, I managed to make it here. But how did you know to do that? I learned a few things about your ghost tricks during our time together. They certainly can be very useful powers, but at times, not so much. I knew that if the internal phones weren't working, you'd be trapped in the death chamber area. So I quickly came up with an alternative route. A route that made use of Sausage Head's spoon and my napkin. Wow, this detective is good. Next time you praise me, go ahead and say it out loud. Dot, dot, dot. Anyway, it looks like it's time for a strategy meeting. An escape strategy, huh? This could be interesting. Let's do it. All right. Okay, once the basement power supply is restored, escape will be impossible. We move under cover of darkness. Yes, I have to give a signal. He has lens. Sorry, we're going back through this and just the 
the reminder of that is just there's going to be a signal button <clears throat> we're going to dive right in and see what happens if they shoot him we're going to have to start over that's fine he's not phased did you know that phased like unfazed is spelled f-a-z not p-h-a-s because i learned that a couple years ago and i was really unhappy I was like, how did I not know that? I was very displeased with myself for not knowing that. <clears throat> okay, it's a special prison. There's no dangerous criminals except for him. They have four timid security guards, but there's hunters. The guards with night vision goggles. I should be able to blind them with their night vision goggles. Okay. Signal. I like that it shift flashes to bunk shows points at you to let you know. All right. Detective's sense. not a good not a good time though okay so that red light that's the light of the night vision goggles on one of the guards you can use the light to let me know where the guard is and if you watch the light closely you can tell how the guard is moving too very informative in this darkness keep a sharp eye out for it there's a guy up there and I learned there's a thing that I can do up there there's a crawl space in the middle okay, so this guy Two thousand two, one thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand. So it's like around two seconds ish, but not even. Wait, no. I think he looks to the left longer than he looks to the right, which to me indicates that I'm supposed to be going to the right. Oh, I can ride around on his bulletproof vest. Cool. That's good to know. Yeah, because I went through here. And I think I got this guy stuck. This right here, there's nobody. Oh, man. I cannot reach there. But there's a dude who's gonna come walking over here, I think. Oh wait, no, there's a dude there. He's not walking. He's just standing. There's another guy on the stairs. Because if I have Jode come here, he's technically within that guy's range of sight. I just, I don't know how far they can see, you know? I think part of the problem is that I literally don't know what my goal here is. You know? I don't think Jode will be able to wiggle behind that toilet. I can't flush this toilet. Apparently it's pronounced like Jode, which I always said Jowd because there's a Jowd in the, um, the opening sequence of Suikoden 2, but apparently it's Jode. So. 
Man, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Because he's going to get seen here. Yeah, okay. Okay. I might... There's gotta be a reason why I ride around on that guy. Like, I can do this. But I'm not sure what that accomplishes for me, except making... I mean, I guess I can ride around on this guy. Yeah. See where he takes me. See what he does. What are you doing, buddy? You're going back up the stairs. What is that? Hmm. Okay. What does that take me to? Empty can. Okay. The empty can actually seems like that'd be a good place to take Joe to, but... Oh, there's a guy in here. What's that? A valve. We got here a bulletproof vest and a valve. <laughs> I'm not sure what else I can do. Can I ring the bell? That doesn't seem to be doing anything. I just... There's like nothing else I can do here. I can drop them all down here and make them very confused. I don't know what that accomplishes for me. Are you both gonna fall down? What are you, what are you gonna do, guys? They're both going up the stairs. God, amazing. Uh. <laughs> Incredible. I suppose I could probably catch a ride with them back down there. As they as they fall, I can hitch a ride. Let's see what happens.
Tell me I missed it. Just gonna see what happens from here. See, like, there's a can, and I could conceivably tell Joe to go to the can and stand there and, and then close the hatch so that these guys. Well, like, and, and, and make it so these guys actually stay up there. And then drop them down. But I still don't know how to deal with those guys down there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the fall is really funny. What do we got here? <laughs> Sorry. That shouldn't be as funny as it is, but it is. Alright, I think I'm gonna have to ask, because I don't I don't have any idea what the first steps here are supposed to be. Like I can't just drop a bucket on this guy's head. And I could conceivably time Jode coming over here. <laughs> but that's pretty funny. Okay, well, we're gonna leave them here. We're gonna let them actually remain up there. This guy does not seem to phase. They did not seem phased by this. Okay. What do I do about you jerks? I don't know. I can't get back over there, so. How do I get rid of this guy? Because I could be like crawl to the toilet. I don't think this is gonna work. Yep. Okay. I don't know what to do with this first bit. Because I suspect that I'm right about this other guy. So I suspect I'm gonna try to get him on to the can on the staircase. But I have no idea what to do here. And I don't think it's gonna be fun. Like, I I had some fun. Okay. I had some fun knocking those guys around, but I don't think this I don't think this is gonna be fun. And I have literally no concept of what to do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on chat hat and blue glass tells me that there is a hint coup. What is your hint coup, friends? For anyone who hasn't seen me request a hint coup before, it is exactly what it sounds like. It is a hint in the form of a haiku, which is a way of forcing people to give me a hint instead of just straight up tell me what to do. <laughs> Which in this case, I kind of do want my hands held, but we'll see. The hint coup, if I can make sense of it. Like if I can solve some of this on my own, that'd be great. I need a hiding place. Give consideration to what's already worked.
The spoon? I don't think the spoon works, though. So. Yeah, he gets seen if he's the spoon. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, he can't... That guy doesn't turn around. So I can't have him crawl into the crawl space behind the toilet. I just don't know. I don't know what else to do. They even took my trash can away. Okay, so he can stand there for a second, but then he gets seen. I can't hurry too much in this darkness. Let's take it slow. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think they're trying to give me hints, too. Take a good look around and check out what the enemy is doing. Aim for the neighboring cell. We can't hurry too much in this darkness. Let's take it slow. Yeah, I really don't know. Like, the only thing that I can think to do, which isn't going to work, is to try everything once. And be like, okay, does this work? Okay, does this work? Okay, does this work? But the answer is going to be none of them is going to work because I'm supposed to know what my second step is. Like, I think I might just need to be told what to do next. Because I have zero, zero ideas in my head. Like, not a single one. Like, if I were playing this game solo, I would just look it up on GameFAQs. And probably still get frustrated. Oh, that didn't work. Like, I have no idea where I'm supposed to be going. Because I don't... I, I don't think that I can do a single step. I think I have to have my second step planned already. And I suspect what I'm going to want to do is move this guy out of that guy's field of vision. And then... There's, like, nothing I can do over here. I literally can do nothing. You know? Literally can do nothing and this guy doesn't turn or anything. So it, it feels impossible. 
Like, I, I, I have, I cannot stress enough. I don't have even the slightest idea. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say, what do I do next? <laughs> I have no idea. Like, there is, there is emptiness in my brain where ideas are supposed to go. Because if I put him anywhere here, he will be, like, anywhere here, he's in that guy's field of vision. Anywhere here, he's in that guy's field of vision. I tried that! I swear I tried that! I thought I tried that. Did I get the timing wrong? Oh. Okay. Now that guy's moving around. Okay. The guards are on the move. Now what? You can get a sense of how the guards are moving by watching the red lights. And I think you already know this, but just in case, if you want to take a look around, you can move the screen with the directional pad. Okay. Okay, so he hides under the bunk, just as he does. Okay, so that guy's moving around. So that I can... This guy, hold on, we're gonna try to see what this guy's up to. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Bulletproof Vest. You're gonna walk over here. Oops. And there's a can. Okay, so you don't go any further up. Okay. <clears throat> All right, where am I gonna go next? area under the stairs is a blind spot for the guards. They won't find him here. This spot is safe. <coughs> so we wait for them to go there. And then that guy's gonna turn around. guy okay I hope they've checkpointed but I bet they haven't apparently there's a hunter lurking in the ceiling yes I can do something about him he dodged the bullet if it wasn't dark maybe <sighs> unfortunately we have to start this over which is really not my favorite thing but that guy walks. Hold on, what are you going to tell me to do, buddy? Okay. Alright. Alright, let's drop this guy. Alright. Yes, yes, everyone's very impressed. Okay. Yay! 
I did it. <clears throat> okay. Let's see if we can do this. Okay. I gotta close this right now. Somebody's falling through it. Okay. Now what am I gonna do? See what that guy does. It would be nice if Joad could get down here, but he can't, so. Where do you take me, buddy? All right. Oh, do you seriously not go here? Hold on. Can I save? Save your current place in time, yes. Continue playing, yes. Okay, so that guy is pacing around. Okay, I'm gonna follow you, buddy. I'm gonna figure out what you do. So you go all the way down here. <clears throat> well, that guy's going up. Wait, no, what are you doing? I have to figure this out. Okay, so you stop there for a little while, and then you walk this way. Oh, and there's another one of those. That's what I have to get to. Got it. Oh, and then I'm gonna get the timing right on this guy. Okay. So you go down. How far down do you go? You go to the stairs. How am I gonna get up around you? Because this is the next safe spot. So that guy, he walks over here. He goes down the stairs. And that guy, meanwhile, goes upstairs too. I'm trying to figure out how to do the timing of this right. Because this is clearly where I need to go. But no, I think there's got to be an intermediate step. There's got to be an intermediate step <clears throat> prior to this. I'm not sure what to do here. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is a matter of getting the precise timing or, or what. Because the thing is, I can't drop a guy and come over here. 
like the guy himself has to drop me off over here. You know? So I'm trying to figure out what to do with this. I'm also kind of worried that I'm going to have to stagger these guys differently somehow. You know? That I maybe have to drop this guy differently. Because he stops here as though to drop, as though to be like, drop me. And I'm like, okay, don't mind if I do. But then what? What are with these valves? I guess that's to make life easier here. Okay, now they're both going up at the same time. I think that's good. There's just, there's nowhere else for me to hide, to, to, to do this. How am I gonna do that? That's a little far, I can't really tell where you are. How about somewhere a little closer? Okay, all right. There is an intermediate step and I don't know what it is. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Good job. All right. So where else can I stick him? We walk down here and then he stops here, which is when you would want to drop him. But I don't know how that, I don't know what good that does me. Because, <clears throat> I can't go forward from here with Jode. And so I need that guy, this guy, to be able to walk past. I got nothing else. don't know. Oh, I didn't realize I was still in this guy's vest. I don't know how that happened. I did not anticipate that I was going to wind up in that guy's vest. Not actually not sure how that happened. I thought I was in the thing up there. Where'd the other guy go? Folks? Oh, there he is. I 
really don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Yeah, no. Okay. I don't know what to do. I just can't seem to find the break I need. Then you'll just have to make one. Try to find a way. Maybe you can try calling me to all kinds of different places. I'm agreeable. I can go pretty much anywhere. You know what's delightful and fun and everyone loves? Trial and error, but at least it has a checkpoint. What, do you want me to climb up into the ceiling? I think I could manage that. But as things stand, I don't have access right now. Could you open that hatch and create an entry point for me? I sure can, thank you. Got it, yeah. So I want this guy to go back down and go away. Although, maybe I could actually do this. Okay, so we'll wait for that guy to go. Yeah. Yeah, hold on. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Come on, come on. Oh, geez, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. We got it. We got it. Now we're going to do this. Okay, no, I can ride this guy now. Here. If I move now, I'm going to fall. Could you close the floor hatch for me? Shoot! Okay. <sighs> we came all that way. We were so close. Right, once we get to this point, we can either sneak out or make a dash for it. I'll leave the route up to you. I might have mentioned this before, but I can go pretty much anywhere. Oh! Oh! Okay. Okay. Now I can do this. Come here, buddy. That's right, you. Cutting it close there, I realize, but... Okay. Oh, I think I know what I can do, actually. I think I've got an idea of what to do here. 
I gotta wait for buddy, but buddy, buddy old man to come here and carry me over here. And then I'm gonna use that to drop that dude and then hopefully clear the passageway for our pal. since they have told me that there are multiple routes I can go here. So we're gonna open this and then we're gonna make this guy go away. And he's gonna be like, huh? And then he's gonna fall. And then I'm gonna tell you to climb up here. I'm glad he can flip. If I move now, I'm going to fall. Could you close the floor hatch for me? I sure can. So, what do you think? I'd say if we've come this far, we did it. Great job, Sissel. Okay. I was slightly frustrated. I thought I had tried the bunk and had ruled out the bunk because it's not just knowing where to go. It's getting the timing right, apparently, that I did that wrong. But, but I did actually pretty okay, all things considered. Yeah. Well, I think part of it was because I had figured out the dudes that were in the ceiling and kind of messed around with that a little bit. I had some, some perspective on like, oh, I bet I can do something. Um, and once they were like, there's multiple ways to go. I was like, oh, I bet I can creep through there. But I didn't anticipate that I was going to be rolling there. Oh, that's amazing. Amazing. Also, I'm glad that there was some checkpointing. That would have been really annoying otherwise. Well, we did it. Well done. Well done. It only took like 40 minutes. Could be worse. The basement generator has been repaired, restoring power to all areas. Oh, shoot. Am I okay? God, I love this song. I guess we'll leave it to Joe to get out the rest of the way. Whew, we just made it. But the question is, what now? Now I don't have anywhere to go, do I? Maybe I'll go back to myself. You better not. <laughs> Cecil and I are both like, no. He's trying to get a rise out of you. Cecil says, you'd better be kidding. But I'm still a condemned criminal, you know. I doubt anybody would welcome me with open arms. Lynn would. Why don't you try contacting Lynn? She went to see some justice minister guy. So an escaped death row convict is supposed to just report into the justice minister, is that it? Hm, I kind of like that. Anyway, after all the trouble you went through, I guess I'd better run. That would be nice, yes. <laughs> all right, Sissel, until we meet again. So now I've saved a condemned criminal. So now I've saved a condemned criminal's life and helped him escape. Was that really the right thing to do? I guess all I can do is believe in Lynn at this point. I mean, given that, like, literally nobody seems to think that this guy deserves it, except for this guy. We'll see. There's more to it than, um, than I think we know. Detective Jode was painting my picture in his cell. He knows me. I'm sure I'll be talking to him again. 
And yeah, they really do make you feel how cool Jode is. Nothing left but an empty cell. No sense in staying here. I might as well go back. Back upstairs using the internal phone. They're like, hey, do you remember how to play this game? Maybe you don't because your brain got fried having to do that self mini game thing. Yeah, no, he, Joe is like insanely strong. Like, that's amazing. I'm gonna go everywhere. Just in case there's a thing to overhear. There's in fact a thing to overhear. Aren't you glad that I go everywhere but where I'm supposed to go? Did you hear? He escaped. Yeah, we're supposed to repair this thing by the time they catch him again. <sighs> but I wonder why he escaped. I heard Detective Jode wanted the death penalty. Right, and it's not like him to change his mind. Maybe on this final night of his, he just got a voice in his head or something. That would be me. I'm the voice in his head. Maybe it told him to run. Are they talking about me? What kind of voice do you think it was? You know, something evil. Like a devil or a demon or something. I picture something with a pointy head wearing sunglasses. Something like that. <laughs> oh, see, it's funny because it sounds like maybe they're talking about a, a demon, but it, in fact, they're just talking about my punk ass self. I'm sorry. I just, he kind of, Cecil kind of has like no good punk hair. They are talking about me. Can they see me? Yeah, I can't go anywhere else or do anything else. So we're going to dial. Let's go to the lower row of cells just to see if there's a conversation there. I doubt it. Looks like things are back to normal here. Oh, they got that guy. Spiky is making that horrible noise, same as ever. Our condemned convict, Detective Jode, is out. As is the curry lover who is dreaming dreams of curry, same as ever. My time will soon be locked away from me as well. I can't waste what I have left. I better get going. Curry is pretty good, yeah. I like it. All right, I guess we better progress the plot. Are you ready for plot progression, my friends? Guard room. The Detective Jode's Until We Meet Again came around quicker than I expected. When I got back to the guard room, the next fateful call came in. And we're still doing the panic dance, I see. Hello, this is... Cicel, are you there? Hello, who's this? Oh, I'm not talking to you, officer. Anyway, if you're there, Cecil, come over here immediately. I'll be waiting for you. If you make it in time, that is. Hey, wait a minute! Trace complete. I can listen to these guys. That call! Who was it from? I don't know. Some weird call. Ah, oh, but who? will call an end to my dancing. Yeah, well, once you get going like that, I'm not gonna stop you. It's a contest then. Which will stop first, my dancing or the turn of the planet? He speeds up. Yeah, good luck with that. Hmm. I bet I could do that dance by now, but I'm more concerned with the detective's message. 
I better get over there fast. Okay, Sissel had better do this dance at some point. I mean, he doesn't have a body, which would make that a little complicated, but you know, it can happen. <clears throat> All right, so like, I could progress the plot. Or hear me out. I could not. <sighs> All right. Are we in a new chapter? Hey buddy, you're boogieing. Can I get over to you? Hi, Ray. Ray is just dancing. Ray. Ray's like, man, you, you, you've done all the talking there is to do, man. I got nothing else to say to you. All right, all right, all right. Fine, fine, fine. I guess there's nothing else to happen here. Ray would like the panic dance. Maybe Ray is the one who taught that guy's ancestors the panic dance all those years ago. This line doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, these two are both out. I just have to try. You never know. All right, the lady's red apartment. Her daughter has snuck out. Oh, isn't she friends with Lynn's little sister figure, Camila? <clears throat> the little girl, I mean. The novelist's story of love and the story of my memory, which will come to its conclusion first. It looks like the little girl is still out. Like mother, like daughter, I guess. They both have their own ways. But where could the girl have gone to with such a high fever? And how could the mother not notice her darling angel is missing? I bet the little girl's trying to get to her dad's house, which would be right here. I think this will be where we're going for that. <clears throat> All right. They're gonna be like, there's nothing to see here, Lauren. Stop trying to make this happen. All right. I, I'm gonna give it a try. You never know, sometimes there might be a thing. They've rewarded me for doing this in the past. Oh, look at that. <laughs> hey, look at that. The detective is back. Yes, Cecil, that's literally what I was gonna say. <laughs> Camila! Without knowing the situation, this scene would look pretty suspicious. Okay, so he has found Camila. That's good. That's good to know. Oh, we're just gonna go everywhere. Just gonna get a little bit of progression. <laughs> yes, Cecil is leaving Jode on red. All right, creepy weirdo is being creepy weirdo. Not even flavor text. Okay, we'll go back to the guard room just to like, see if they just got anything else to say or if the panic dance is still going on. Looks like the panic dance is still going on. This panic dance that has been passed down in our family for generations. There's just one problem with it. Doesn't have an end, dot, dot, dot. Hey, quit acting so bored and ask me. Ask me, what's the problem, Bailey? Yeah, yeah, what's the problem, Bailey? 
The problem is, it's hard to know when to stop. Dot, dot, dot. Hey, quit acting so bored and pay attention. Guess it's hard for you to know when to stop talking to. Oh, same, same, same. <laughs> I like that we've got like the regular song going on, but the panic dance is mixed in low. Amazing. I want all the cosplayers. When I'm done with this game, I want to look up all the cosplay. And covers. <laughs> is he self-soothing? Is that what he's doing? Maybe. There's nothing down here. Yeah. Chicken kitchen, all right. Gonna be a little more singing we can hear, maybe. I guess this restaurant never sleeps. But no matter when I come here, there are never any customers. I guess I'd better be on my way, too. Special investigation, yeah, let's see what the the boss of the cops is, is up to. He's yelling at his wife for being yelled at by his wife. <coughs> Looking troubled, the chief is wiggling his itchy toes. The chief here, of course I'm working. There's an execution tonight. No, not my execution. What are you talking about? Honey, wait his feet. Hmm, well, I guess his wife was radioing him. If she had called him on the phone, I could have gone and seen what she looked like. His feet are clearly troubling him. You should wear socks with your shoes, buddy. That would probably help what you've got going on, at least a little bit. Alright, into the kitchen. The deem, da-da-da, especially. Especially that. Oh, looks like memory's gone. Just as before, the delicious aroma of chicken fills the air. La la la, as long as I have chicken in you and chicken, I'm happy. That poor girl. She got a stomach ache from listening to my singing. She's very delicate, that girl. I guess his songs didn't sit well with Detective Memory's digestive system. <laughs> what? I guess I'd better go before I start getting stomach trouble too. Cecil, you don't have a stomach anymore, buddy. You are a ghost. Ghosts don't get stomach aches, I don't think. I think. I don't really know. Cecil would know better than I would, actually. I'm sorry, Cecil. I'm sorry I'm live-splaining being a ghost to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I guess we've run out of places to go that aren't the plot. I guess we better go see what's up with this payphone situation. All right. Oh good. Thanks, thanks, Chrono. I'm glad you appreciate my clever word play. word play. I words, I words good. Ooh, we've got a moon, we've got a full moon. On the other end of the telephone line, the scene that greets me tells me one simple fact. Music. Those are some guitars.
if the returners were learning new music, this would be a good candidate. This is a really good song. Sorry, I'm just grooving to this. I know we could play the game. Or we could just... Just listen to the music. And then here they're doing some time signature stuff, which I can only refer to. I'm sorry, the official name is Proggy Bullshit. <laughs> That's the official technical term when you start messing with time signatures. man it's so good it's really good see that's how I would get my bandmate Kevin on board with this one even though it doesn't have a lot of crazy guitar stuff but he could do this this part where you that would have to be me because well I don't know. My brain is figuring out how I would arrange this for my band. It's a really good song. I sent my bandmate Wedge the soundtrack to listen to. We'll see what she thinks. All right. The scene that greets me tells me one simple fact. We'll see if somebody is dead here. I hope not, but probably. That usually seems to be the case. Oh. Oh! That our great escape plan has ended in failure. Man, okay, somehow the Ace Attorney team manages to make, how do they manage to simultaneously make things that are so cool and so incredibly uncool at the same time? Like the poses are awesome. The character designs fundamentally, like the way they look and the way they stand is like super cool and the music is super cool and the tension of this moment is so cool. But our hero here is wearing a hot pink smock with smudged paint on it. And I know that his buddy has this really stupid way of walking. And the juxtaposition of these things all in like it's so dumb and so cool at the same time and i don't remember thinking that the ace attorney stuff i watched was as cool as the coolness in this game this game's coolness factor is off the charts like too cool but it's also so dumb it's amazing like sissel is so dumb, but also cool. Like, how? How do they do it? Man, how is one group of people so capable of both things? Also, we know for a fact that the Ace Attorney team is part of the DNA making up Toby Fox's game making inspiration, yes? Because he's also pretty good at cool and really dumb. So maybe he learned how to do it from them. Because like, I love the mother games. Don't get me wrong, but they don't really have very many moments of like, oh snap, that's cool. Well, the, the papyrus date very intentionally references uh, the Ace Attorney style of interrogation and the music is referencing them with overlapping uh, sounds too, so. Like, it's very definitely, like, there's an element of it there. I wouldn't be surprised if Toby Fox likes Ghost Trick in particular. Like, this this does have really strong Toby Fox vibes. Like, it's so cool, but it's so dumb, but it's so cool. And I'm just over here being a person who can't make dumb, funny stuff, really. Like, everything I do is, like, super serious. And I've been trying to work 
comedy into things that I do more intentionally. Yeah, and I guess Missile can hang out with the annoying dog. That would be amazing. They would be friends. They would be friends. Um, I don't know. It's just like, I would never be able to do this because it's just not who I am. I am too serious all the time. I can be delighted by other people's really fun, dumb humor, but I don't think I put any of it into the work that I make. I did, however, change my Discord handle to President Lauren for about 30 seconds just to crash a conversation folks were having there, though, so apparently I can be capable of dumb humor, too. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it was really fun. <sighs> I guess when I do humor, it's deadpan stupidity sometimes. <laughs> so I guess maybe that's why it tickles me so much. Thank you. Anyway, this is really cool. The tension is amazing. If I weren't Lauren talking to people about this, I would be like, oh my God. I mean, you heard me gasp when the scene was revealed. This is amazing. Let's see what happens. Never expected to see you here, Inspector Cavanella. I believe that's my line, my old friend. What were you doing here? I believe that's my line too, clearly. I came to attend your execution. They told me what time it was. And just the cut, where like, they're such absurd, ridiculous characters, but this moment has emotional resonance. And as over the top and silly as this character is, you feel that this matters to him and you can see it in his expression and his character design. He's cool. Couldn't get into the chamber, so I was observing a moment of silence here. You know, it's true, Capcom games do have a lot of very cool and very dumb. I think they tend to skew more dumb than cool, but I think that's because they don't... That's not my style of cool. <laughs> this is more my style of cool, I guess. I don't know. Do you hear those guitars? And when I looked up, my eyes full of tears. There you were, baby. Oh. This is really powerful. This is really good scene setting. If the game was less over the top, they wouldn't be able to have him tell us this. But because the game is so over the top, he can narrate this and it works so well. It's just the way things turned out. I took part in what seemed like a fun game and here I am. <laughs> your escape, your rescue by a ghost. Here's what I wish, my old friend. Wish it was anybody but me who found you here. Dot, dot, dot. He's gone. Because now that I found you, man, I have to turn you in. You have to stay spotlessly clean after all. That's significant. There's a certain something between these two. Did Cavanella kill his wife? And Cecil took, not Cecil, uh, um, uh, Joe took the fall? I don't know. Is it a warm something or is it cold? It's ex-boyfriend still best friends. Yeah, no, like, I think it makes perfect sense. They dated, realized that they were not a good idea romantically, but still best friends, and they still have that spark. Because sometimes, when you sometimes when you when you break up with someone because it's not working or not a good idea for the two of you, but not because the relationship itself goes terribly, sometimes that little something, there's just a little spark that doesn't go away. It doesn't have to mean that you ever want to be in a relationship again. It could mean that, but it doesn't have to. 
but there's still something. There is something there that other people sometimes can even pick up on. So I am convinced of this, and I don't think I'm the right person to write fanfic for it, but if I were. Whatever it is, it's immeasurably deep. I should probably see what Detective Jode has to say. Immeasurably deep, huh? The gun is red. I don't know if that means anything. But let's go talk to Jode, and then he's gonna get shot, and then I'm gonna to have to save him from being found by Cabanella. Oh, I'm sure someone has. This game has enough of a fandom. And it's made by the Ace Attorney team. So I can promise you that fans of this game who are also fans of Ace Attorney are gonna write about these two as boyfriends or ex-boyfriends. I'm just saying. It's a fandom that you can predict for that. I'm gonna talk to him. Thanks for coming. I wanted to say goodbye to you. As you can see, I guess I'm not going to be much help to you. What's going to happen to you? Being executed tonight is just about the only thing on my schedule, it seems. Executed, huh? He shouldn't shoot you, he's supposed to turn you in. Death is pretty much meaningless to me. Anyway, I guess we'll be seeing each other again. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. By the way, there's something I'm looking for. Oh, that's right, your lost memory. You know things I, you know things I'd like to know. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions before you die, <laughs> before you get shot by your best friend? In return for tonight's fun little game, is that it? These are all really good. I want to know all of these. Oh, good. I'm glad that panic. The people on TikTok are doing the panic dance. That's as it should be. Very good. All right. So let's ask about Sissel. That's what Sissel would want to know first. And I should be able to ask all of these. I saw it, you know. That picture you were painting in your cell tonight. That was me. Which means you must know me. Dot, dot, dot. I'm very sorry, but... I can't talk to you about that now. What? Why not? Good question. Because I... I don't know your true face. He looks really angry. My true face? I'm a detective. I can only talk about what I'm sure of. However, I can give you one lead at least. A lead? What is it? A long time ago, I gave Lynn something to hold on to for me. It was a music box. Yes, I remember that. Gasp. If you ever come across it, I advise you to open it. It might jog your memory. That wooden box I found in Lynn's apartment. And that's the only help I can give you right now. It's interesting for him to not want to tell me right now because he doesn't know for sure that that's me. It might not be. That's that's true. We don't know for sure. Cecil just thinks that's him, but it might not be him. About Cavanella. That man pointing the gun at you right now. They say he's your good friend. <laughs> no, I mean, he might have his identity mistaken. A ray isn't actually a lamp. So it's entirely possible that Sissel thinks that the body that he sees is his own. But it might actually not be. There could be some sort of shenanigans going on. We don't know. Just like I don't know 100% for sure that his name is Sissel. This whole thing could be a case of mistaken identity of some sort. I could be not even a ghost. I could be like a shepherd of the dead or something like that. Um, that is being manipulated because of supernatural forces slash aliens to help humans. Like, we don't know for sure until the game 100% confir confirms things. And I think that's a fair point. We were when we were in the detective division together. That was a long time ago. Now he's the head of the special investigation unit, the top of the elite. 
Getting ahead is the only thing he thinks about now. And that white coat of his is the symbol of his determination. Is that the name of this song? His white coat. For somebody looking to get promoted to the top, what's the one thing they're afraid of most? A blot on their record, of course, like a stain on a pure white coat. Like perhaps murdering somebody. Oh, who would promote a man with a coat covered in stains? Like our painter here, who's who's wearing a smock covered in stains. On the outside, he appears stained, damaged. On the outside, Cavanella appears untainted. With a clean conscience. Conscience. But perhaps it's actually reversed. Maybe Cavanella is keeping an eye on Lynn and Camilla. Camilla. Because he's a witness or he's the one who knows. And maybe there's some sort of a complicated impasse where he won't harm Camilla, who I think might be Cecil. Cecil. Jode's child. Um, if she doesn't turn him in for being the one who murdered her mother. I don't know, folks. I'm concocting a thing here. Because it feels like they're intentionally setting up the fact that Jode looks like a murderer. Everyone believes he's a murderer. He has this coat covered in stains. And Cabanella, everybody says, is amazing and spotless that there's got to be, because we know this man. There's more to it. Yes, when, when Joe said you always have to be spotless and clean. Yes, that's the thing is he specifically said that. So either, or, or perhaps, perhaps he, perhaps Cabanella didn't kill Joe's wife, but he, there were some circumstances. And Cavanella didn't have to turn Jode in the first time, but he did. We'll see. If it was me, I'd go with a black coat that didn't show the stains. Yes, Sissel, and this is why you're probably a gangster of some sort. The world is full of excellent candidates. Even one mistake could be the end of a career. It's just, I think that because, like, literally you see the stain on his shirt as he says that line, it stood out to me. Especially because they did have the blot that they talked about before, or the spotless record. Like, it just, it, that is being emphasized, so it is important. Symbolism. But everybody makes mistakes, right? Nevertheless, Cabanella has chosen the path of the white coat. That's symbolic. And he'd do anything, anything at all, to hide his coat's shadows. I'm beginning to think Cavanella did it. I'm beginning to think this, this theory of mine, he's done something bad. Did he make a deal? I don't know. Like send his good friend to the gallows. Because that's the right thing to do. I'm a condemned criminal after all. And that's why he has that gun pointed at me right now. Execution. Is your execution really the right thing to do? I had a fair trial and that's what was decided. No problem there. But still. This is the punishment that I should receive in order to bring a final close to that case and put it to rest forever. Notice he's not saying, for the evil that I have done, the bad thing that I did. Not, yes, I also thought, wondered if no problem here is similar to no problem there. If the uh, original Japanese phrase is the same. Earthbound, if anybody hasn't played it. Talking to ghosts is a free action. 
<laughs> Thanks, May. Um, yes, this does not sound like an admission of guilt. This does not sound like he should be executed for what he's done. This sounds like he should be executed for the sake of the case. And he was found guilty. There was a trial. All of these things. None of them are admission of guilt. Dot, dot, dot. Lynn believes you're innocent. She's running around right now trying to prove it. Is that all you have to leave her with? No problem there. Dot, dot, dot. I, I was sentenced to death. I was sentenced to the death penalty for killing my wife, Alma. But to me, that's not all it was for. What do you mean that's not all it was for? I'm talking about something that happened even before this case. I stole somebody else's life. Does he literally mean that he killed somebody? Or did he wind up getting, like, getting the promotion and the girl and the everything that Cabanella, for example, thought was his due? We'll see. What? The other murder. Okay, no. At least Cecil is reading it as a murder. It was ten years ago. I'll never forget it. That day I saved the life of a little girl. That's right! That was Lynn. Lynn was being chased, and he shot the person who was chasing her. And I stole away the life of a man. Ten years ago, the life of a little girl. Could that little girl be Lynn? Dot, dot, dot. She told you about that. Yeah, she said you were her hero. Now just calm down and drop that weapon. Stay back if you come any closer. I'll shoot her. Ten years ago, in a certain park, a little girl was taken hostage. I was still young then. I didn't have any self-control. I remember asking myself at the time, Jode, are you going to shoot this guy? And this is what I answered. Yeah, I'm going to shoot. My hand was shaking a little. If my hand slipped... Was Sissel? I'm sorry. This is completely baseless, but was Sissel the man that he shot and something else going on? I don't know where that came from. The man might die. Even the little hostage girl was in danger. Nevertheless, that was my answer. Yeah, I'm going to shoot. They just, they haven't shown us the man who did it. Which makes me think it's somebody. That we know. And I don't think it would be Cabanella, given the circumstances. Obviously the person's not dead, if that's the case. But he's calling it a murder. I don't know. I'm just... Something's not lining up, right? And my brain is throwing really crazy, baseless things at it. That's how it goes. Sometimes. And the man died. I took his life. Or it could be no one at all. It could just be the moment that things changed. Lynn was never told the outcome. She was so young at the time. I don't deserve to be called a hero. What I deserve is execution. Buddy, no. I, I think that they may be more complicated than that. And yeah, this, this wasn't, there wasn't a gag in there. It is a serious thing. Something's not lining up right. Ready to go? He says to Cabanella. My arms are getting tired. <laughs> He's so cool. You got it, baby. Time for the big show of hauling you in. Oh, that's right. Just let me make one last phone call. That's a big favor to ask so casually, my old friend. Tell you what I'll do. 
I'll pretend I'm not watching. I'll be listening, though. On that, you can rely. Sissel, you've got your own path to follow. You'd better hurry. My own path? Lynn is at the Justice Minister's office right now, right? It might not be a bad idea to say my final farewell to him, too. Hello? Everything's fine here? That's not what you expected. Is this the chicken kitchen? I'd like to request a delivery. Um, the chicken kitchen is next door. Goodbye. Hmm. It sounds like she's in some kind of trouble. It does, doesn't it? Go help her out, would you, Cecil? Sorry to keep you waiting, Inspector. Ready to go? Oh, before I forget... I have a little something for you. Dramatic. A present, if you will. There's nothing else like it, baby. If there's nothing else like it, don't throw it. What's this? A pocket watch? Considering my situation, it's the last thing in the world I need right now. Forgive me, man. Let's just say I'm no good at choosing presents. This is it, Sissel. Let me just leave you with one thing. Don't trust other people's memories. Look for what you seek with your own eyes. I'll remember that. <laughs> that man's walk. They've gone. There's nothing left here. No hope and no cores either. Without any cores, I can't follow after them. This is the end of my adventure. I feel pretty dejected, but I guess I'd better go find Lynn. I'll follow the path Detective Joyd pointed out to me. Detective Jowd, Joad, pointed out to me. The path to the Justice Minister's office, where Lynn went to try and stop the execution. <sighs> Cleared chapter nine. A new song, Trauma. That's a good name for it. We're saving and we're continuing. 11.41 p.m. Now that my assignment to stop the execution has ed had ended in such an unsatisfactory way, I decided to go see Lynn at the Justice Minister's office. Detective Jode's story about this other murder weighs on me heavily. Should I tell Lynn about it? I just don't know. There were pain meds over there on the floor. This time, Lynn isn't dead. The atmosphere makes me think it might be too soon to count my blessings just yet. Okay, so the defense minister presumably... Maybe he had a heart attack. Behind the desk, and Lynn's checking him out. I'm glad Lynn isn't dead. But what in the world is she doing? Then again, do I really want to know? Is she trying to give him CPR? Sorry, Lynn. Yep. She's trying to help. I see his body. I hope... Oh, there we go. Ray is here. 
Foolish Flames? I hope that's out there. I hope there is a 100,000 words, really more than that. I've written 200,000 words of my dumb fanfic, so we'll go with a 200,000 word. Jode Cavanella, rivals to friends to lovers to exes to enemies to friends to lovers fic. I think that's amazing and it should exist. <clears throat> Are you all right? You don't look very well. I ran into another dead body and it didn't even phase me. It didn't shock you? Nope, not a bit. All of these deaths you come across. You should be able to learn something from each one. Yeah, I guess. Such as, let's see, the importance of life, for example. I don't think that's quite it somehow. Well, I guess I'd better be getting back there. Thanks, Ray. All right. I always gotta try. Lady's Red Apartment. See what happens. Wonder if the little girls are gonna be up to shenanigans together. All right, there appears to be nothing going on here. Hello, Machman. Look, I'm very good at detouring. I like to detour. For better or for worse. All right. Nothing there. Well, it's just, it's really, really quick to determine if something's going on in an area or not. And then you get interesting little bits about what's going on with the characters. Hey, Danny, what's up? I'm taking detours. All right, Creepy McCreeperson is still going. Oh, man. Oh, man. Is the panic dance continuing? I'm going to say yes. I don't think they're done with it yet. They could milk it for more. Yes! No, the extra interactions have been really great. It's really delightful. All right. I was right. Bailey's still at it. What? No commentary? No joke? No nothing? Come on. Okay, well, we just got the dance. I feel like we need to all do this dance. I need to make friends do this dance. It's so amazing. Wait, there is a Final Fantasy VI Ghost Trick crossover AU? Actually, I feel like I've come across that. And I put it away because I was like, I'm going to play that game someday. So fortunately, I don't remember anything about it. It's true, both games do have ghosts. And the undead. There's the ghost train. Phantom train. It's ghosts. Something in the basement, but I have to go there just in case. Oh, ghost trick characters in the Final Fantasy VI setting. Oh my god, I really want Sabin to be friends with this the cast of this game. I feel like he would get along really well with them. You know? I think he'd be a great fit. All right, it's looking like we are not getting a lot of side bits here. But I have to go anyway, just in case. You never know. You never know. Never know. Man, I backed a Kickstarter for a tabletop RPG that is specifically for playing fan characters, like for like a fanfic crossover, but tabletop. And it's like, embrace the cringe and just have fun with it. And I thought that was just the greatest thing. So I backed it. Who cares about what's cringe or not? Be free, create the things you love. Nothing here, same as before. 
I guess I don't need to come back here anymore. Unless I ever feel the urge to see this moon again. You can't tell me not to come back, Sissel. I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, are you ready for the trouble man's office? You ready to progress the plot? We're gonna do it. Plot progression time. <coughs> see what kind of cool music we unlock this chapter. This poor man is having a bad time. I think he had a heart attack or something. We're gonna have to get his medication to him. Do I talk to her or to that dead body? I'll talk to her. Eek! What kind of greeting is that? I mean, I know I'm a ghost and everything, but... Well, and how did it go? Was Detective Jode still alive? He'd already be been executed by the time I got there. I did manage to save him, but... You did? Oh, I'm so glad. Wait a minute. Did you say but? I love her. <laughs> I told Lynn about my adventure at the prison. About that other murder, though. I couldn't bring myself to tell her. Inspector Cabanella arrested Detective Jode? I can't believe it! Yeah, I feel the same way. I can't believe that wherever I go, somebody is always dead. Either you or someone else. Sorry about that. <laughs> She's so weird. So who is that lying on the floor there? Oh, you noticed him, did you? That's the Justice Minister. Yes, you don't say. The man who signed the order to carry out Detective Jode's execution. He was already dead when I got here. Shouldn't you have called for help in that case? Hmm, I guess so. But I'm wanted, remember? For murder. I was hoping we could save him without me getting caught. We, eh? Oh boy. <sighs> All right, buddy. This poor man, he's been so stressed out. We'll see what his situation is like. But I think his wife is writing a romance novel that he doesn't want her to write. And she's left him and taken their daughter. And he's just very sad about everything. So we'll see what happens. Maybe he had an affair and she's punishing him by writing the novel of his affair with someone else. Hey, can you hear me? Hmm. He's dead, but he still seems to be unconscious. Could you rescue him now while he's still unconscious? Instead of talking to him, I bet it'd be faster to just see for yourself what really happens. Yeah, I bet, you'll, I bet you're right. Back we go, then, to four minutes before his death. <clears throat> I like Jode is the only one, I think, who's strong-willed enough that, like, immediately woke up. No, he didn't separate from her. She left him and took the daughter, and he's been begging her to come back, if I remember correctly. Let's rewind time, see what's going on with this sad fellow. All right. I guess Missile is also full filled with determination, much like Jode. Phone call. Emma! Oh, excuse me. What? All right. I'll do as you say. Is he being blackmailed? This is terrible. I love that they use rotary phones. She's not answering, is she, buddy? Why doesn't she answer? Oh. Oh. He's just, he's, he's having a time. Oh, buddy. Ah. 
Is he just gonna do this for four minutes? But medicine! Oh, it is, it is, okay, yeah. It is totally a heart attack that he's having. And it, I thought I saw the medicine that was knocked over there. He's gonna try to get water and he's gonna knock the water away. That's not four minutes, but I guess it could be. Such a foolish man. Oh, you woke up. He's a contradiction. Contradiction? The more we search for the truth, the further into a dilemma we fall. The world of men is steeped in contradictions. If we choose this, we can't have that. If a man tries to have his medicine bottle and water pitcher too, he loses both. Oh, I don't know. To me, it looks like he could have had both of those things just now. He didn't know the truth about the world. That's why he died. Such a foolish man. Or maybe I should say a pathetic man. That's the more fitting word. Uh, I don't think this guy gets it yet. That the foolish and pathetic man is him. Is that what they call a contradiction? By the way, what's your name? Dot, dot, dot. Just call me a seeker of truth. Sidestepped that one, didn't he? <sighs> All right. No need to think too hard about this one. All I have to do is get his medicine to him. Pretty simple. But there's one more thing that concerns me. What was that telephone call the justice minister got all about? Got all upset about? All worked up about? We're missing something. It was right after that that his health took an instant downturn. I've never seen such a foolish, pathetic, and strange man. Uh, I think you'd better stop there. Let's hang out on the phone so we can get this. Emma! Oh, excuse me. Did he have an affair with a blue lady? Forgive me for calling so late, Mr. Minister. Who is this? How did you get this number? We have your daughter. That's not good. That's really not good. Who is this? Amelie's tutor? Would a tutor call you at this hour? Yeah, this is bad news. No. I'll say it one more time. We have your daughter. What? My daughter, is she all right? Tell me she's all right. Here for yourself. Papa, help. I'm gonna be killed. What do you want? What are your demands? I believe we already made our demand known the other day. Oh, so it was you. And have you complied? Has the execution been carried out? Interesting. They want Jode killed. I didn't do it because of your demand. I did it because that's my job. Yes, yes, of course. They should be contacting me any minute now with the confirmation. There's no need for this kidnapping. We're very thorough. You do well to remember that. Uh, and of course it goes without saying, we're watching you. If this information leaves this room, leaves that room, you'll never see your daughter again. I trust you understand that. Don't tell the police, is that it? Exactly. All you have to do is your job. I'll write. I'll do as you say. I'll make sure the execution is carried out tonight. You have my word. I guess we're going to do this. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. We're going to go there instead of staying here. 
We'll save this man another time, but we have to get some information first. I don't think the kid is going to be killed. I don't think we have to worry about the child dying. Do they have a recording of a little girl? Or is she actually here? We'll see. Apparently, the police in this country aren't so easily fooled. So are they not aliens? Are they just from another country that happens to be blue and weird? This music is really, like, weird and a little uncomfortable to listen to. I had no idea word of tonight's deal had leaked. Papa, help! I'm gonna be killed! I hate you, Mama! Luckily, I managed to arrange it so the Justice Minister could hear her voice. What's taking the goods so long to arrive? I'm starting to get concerned. Yeah, so it is just a recording device. Okay. <clears throat> oh, look, they've got the same, you see the, um, the nesting dolls over on the right-hand side of the screen? Um, the, uh, the, I believe those are also, like, there's another set of those. I think, were they in the basement of the old dude? I think they were there. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> so, the, uh, the weird superintendents, uh, death basement weird thing. I think he has some similar statues to those, so there's maybe a connection there. Hmm. All right, we're gonna <clears throat> teleport. I can't use the phone right now. Like I said, all women are like traps. That and this, and that and this are hardly related. When in the past, I can only use the line when the phone is being used to make a call. Okay, so I'm gonna have to let him die and then load again. Because it seems like there's nothing I can do here. Yeah. Uh-oh. This woman doesn't show any signs of moving from that spot. And I can't use the telephone line either. Hmm, looks like I fell into a trap. It's useful. Useful knowledge. All women are like traps. Some are sweet traps, others are bitter. Don't you understand that? Okay, anyway, I think I'd better rethink things here. Guess I'd better rewind the clock again and see if I can pick up any other clues. All right. I think it was to Ufus that we're saying goodnight to. I'm sorry if I missed you, by the way, friend. All right, trick time. Oh, another phone call. Oh, excuse me. Forgive me for calling so late, Mr. Minister. Oh, right, we got that. We had this already. It's true, Katie Washington has never killed a child. <laughs> Or lost one. All right. Stay here. Kidnapping, eh? Once again, I'm not sure I know what the word means. Cecil! Oh my god. But it's apparently the cause of the minister's attack. Such a useless man. Huh? A useless man caught up in a useless case. Case? Why doesn't he understand that? Anyway. <laughs> Cecil's like, shut up with the self-loathing, dude. I'm trying to solve a mystery here. Anyway, we only have four minutes here. I'd better do something about that medicine. It's 
So this medicine stops the minister's attacks, eh? If I could, I'd spill them onto his desk right now. But unfortunately, I can't even open the cap. What a shabby excuse for a man. Huh? He wears his important-looking uniform and sits working at his stately desk. But what does he have inside? Nothing. A miserable, shabby excuse for a man. Oh, dear. I think you've already said quite enough. I have to call my wife. I have to see if it's true. Maybe they called the wrong person. This minister doesn't accept the truth easily. He's morally bankrupt. Okay, now you're taking it a bit too far. His wife won't answer for some reason. Hmm, a wife who doesn't answer her phone. I think I know who that is. A morally bankrupt man deserves a morally bankrupt wife. Why doesn't that man understand that? Now I'm sorry I ever brought this guy along. I'm gonna see if I can go to her place and do the call, and then I might maybe have to start this over. Although it might not work if she doesn't pick up. It's no use, the line isn't working. Hmm. Apparently it only works if the other party answers. If only he could at least drink some of this water. Too bad he knocks this pitcher to the floor at the end of his four minutes. Such a stupid man! Huh? Once water is spilled, there's no getting it back. And knowing this full well, why do people still spill water pitchers? Is he talking about a secret that got out? I don't know. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Yeah, I've known... I mean... We can, I think a lot of us can fall into the, the spiral of self-loathing and say some sometimes, frankly, ridiculous things about ourselves. All right. Documents, I can't do anything there. I'm trying to save this man. Actually, I'm gonna see what happens if I'm in the medicine when he knocks it away, in case it goes somewhere, and then we may have to we may have to load. Uh oh, here it comes. His worry and anxiety have reached their peak. Huh? If one lives his life in fits, he's bound to be plagued by fits. It's so simple. Why doesn't he understand? But there wasn't a chance to rescue him before now. It's not over yet, though. I can't give up now. Just in case... Because he's going to knock it away. And I want to see if, if that... Ah. Okay, so swing, raise, close. Oh, I, I should have been I should have been checking out what was going on over here. I'm gonna swing the sword and then raise the arm. We're gonna see what happens. medicine to the minister, but hmm, there are only a few seconds left. It isn't enough time. Such a short-sighted man. Huh? Happiness escapes us just as we are about to pull it in. We have to grab it while we can. Not only happiness, but dreams, love, and hope, too. Clearly someone here is overly naive. Anyway, there isn't enough time to do anything in this state. I think I'd better rethink this from the beginning. 
If he could just get some of that water, he might feel a little better. Did he just say something constructive? Can't do that. Okay, hold on. again. Okay. I'm gonna try to flap the water at him. Okay. Okay. On one hand, we have a super duper ultra extra elaborate ridiculous Rube Goldberg invention that we would have to spend a lot of time figuring out what to do with. And have to load and load and load and see what can we interact with because we can't get over there until he's dying. Or... We go over to the other side and just do a little flap flap. So they, they distract you into thinking that you might need to do this convoluted, complicated thing. But the old man actually says <coughs> this helpful thing, which is a hint. And then Sissel draws attention to the fact that that's a hint by being like, wait, was that helpful? To let you know that that isn't just something that you should tune out the way you've tuned out everything else the old man has said. So, that is delightful, and I am very amused. There, that should help. At least now he's had some water. He's still breathing, apparently. But he looks far from recovered, unfortunately. Such a wishy-washy man! Huh? He can't make up his mind whether to live or die. That's how he lives his life. Okay... At least now I bought some time to get his medicine to him. Fate changed, yay! I'm not sure what else I can do here. <coughs> I can't use the phone lines right now. What a befitting room for this man, huh? It looks stately, but it's filled with nothing but useless trash. One in the past, I can only use. Oh my god. Sissel is trying to say the same stuff that he always says when you try to do this. But this guy is interrupting with his madness. I've never seen anybody drink water the way this man just did. The water pitcher is completely empty. He's an empty vessel of a man. Huh? An empty, withered man. Where is his oasis? This guy is really starting to get on my nerves. This guy is a really starting to get on my nerves. Typo. The minister's fate has changed, but the situation still seems the same. I can't move anywhere now. Did I miss something? I think I saw a path just for a second while the minister was drinking the water. Maybe I should start over from the beginning. Ah! Thank you, Sissel. 
from the beginning. Yeah, Caster, I think you're supposed to waste a bunch of time there and then figure out eventually, like, oh. All right, so they're letting me know. The water. averted and I'm elsewhere there that should help okay yes we've heard this dialogue fate changed I'm gonna want this Okay, time for the next step. Now, about this medicine bottle. If the minister's going to make a full recovery, I have to deliver this thing to him. But how is a ghost with no hands or feet supposed to do that? I guess I'll just have to use my head instead. All right. That looks really good. If only the medicine bottle was under that swing. I bet it would go flying, but to the wrong side of the room. I think I'm starting to form a plan here. if we do this. Does he say something about that? It's a pretty light frame for its size. There sure are a lot of things that can fall down in this room. He's a fallen man! Huh? He deserves to have everything come dumbling down on his head. I don't know about fallen man, but you talk about him like he's your fall guy. Fun wordplay. I guess the key here is what order the objects are dropped in. So close. The swing just had a little more reach to it. I think I'd better look for something else. things are dropped. Oh! 
Okay. <clears throat> which things are dropped. Okay. So I think we want the um, melon on this side. So we're gonna try out we're gonna do this. me over here. <clears throat> okay, lift, lift it up. Oh, that turned the wrong way. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna try again. Sorry. This is gonna take me a little doing, sorry. Okay. Yes, 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 we've seen this before. I think it's significant that I can do this. What does he say there? This urn is pretty light. Once an urn is dropped, there's no getting it back. I guess I'd better think carefully about what I drop and when. Okay, hold on. Let's see if I can get this. What I'm going to try to do is put the frame on the urn so that I can then wheel. Yeah, that right there. See? Yes, 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 yes. Everybody's very impressed. Okay. I'm gonna try to roll it. Yeah! Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot! Turn it. And then we're gonna rock this and knock that one over. exactly the way I wanted it here. I'm sorry I didn't narrate what I was doing as well as I could have, but oh buddy, 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 buddy old pal. You should maybe not take all of them. I am the mini golf now, yes. <laughs> well once I kind of figured out the pieces of it, um they began to make sense. Um <clears throat> there. The minister finally took his medicine. I think maybe he even took too much medicine. Such a greedy man. Huh? He's supposed to take two capsules with water. Why doesn't he know that? I'll cut the guy some slack. There, see? Da -da -da. 
cleared the too much medicine challenge. Avert fate without any deaths after the final fate change. Oh, that means that you can get challenges if you don't die. Amazing. Oh, <laughs> am I good at this game's logic? I can only assume that, you know, when I was a kid, we did a little bit of studying of like, we like learned about Rube Goldberg inventions and I thought they were cool, dumb, but cool. Much like this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um but i haven't ever really successfully built one i just i learned about them when i was a kid and like periodically they would like make the rounds on youtube as an adult i would see like some rube goldberg invention thing made a made a made a big presence um and and so like i guess it's just like like, I don't think I have enough experience to say I have experience with them. So it may just be that my brain is wired in such a way that this particular convoluted sort of nonsense, I'm like, oh, okay. But part of it is also, I'm like, okay, they've given me these pieces. So how can I use these pieces? What do these things do? Because it's not intuitive what any of it does. You have to do it and see what they've set it up to do. Like, I didn't know what the deal was with the armor, but then they're like, look, it spins. And I was like, oh, okay, that's clearly gonna knock the thing around. <clears throat> and I didn't even see the urns until I knocked one over. And then I was like, oh, okay. Because the urns exist and our thing, and they're like, by the way, knock things over in an order. I was like, oh, and then it would make sense to knock that other thing onto it. And, and prior to that, I was just dropping stuff to see what happened. So I knew that that thing fell down. It was like, oh, well, that would make sense. And when I dropped the, the thing onto it, like onto the rolling thing, but then it got stuck because it was going this way instead of this way, I was like, there's now I know that the urns are a thing. And I looked over and saw that there was an urn on the opposite side. And I was like, okay, I can work with this. Um, but it's like none of that is stuff that I would look at it and have seen because I didn't even pick up on the pieces that were interactable. Um, but once I had the pieces, I was just kind of like, how do I use the pieces that they've given me? I don't know. I don't know. It's good though. It's a good game. All right. Phew. That was a lot of work. Well, hopefully this taught him a lesson. Huh? He greatly underestimated his dependence on his medicine. I hope he learned something from this experience. First, know yourself. That is the key to everything. I think you need to listen to your own advice. Anyway, let's go back to the world of the present. Yay! And so the Justice Minister is now back to life. But the furrows in his brow are even deeper now. Lynn! And apparently our lady detective is the present cause of those furrows. Look, detective. He was sentenced after a fair trial, and the man himself wants to be executed. But there was no evidence! All they had was his own confession! That's really interesting. But it was no ordinary confession. It was the confession of an esteemed detective. Stay back. I told you I don't want anyone come, anybody coming near me. Mr. Minister, please listen to me. I might be able to gather new evidence in that case tonight. What? So please, please, just give me a little more time. Dot, dot, dot. I just got a call from the prison. Your death row convict apparently just escaped. Unfortunately, after all this time, it seems he now wants to dodge his punishment. But, but... When he's apprehended, his sentence will be carried out. Tonight. No. But when the sentence is handed down, you are against enforcing the death penalty. So why did you sign the order all of a sudden? Well, I... I was simply performing my duty as Justice Minister. That's all there is to it. 
So, so there was no evidence. He just said he did it. They were like, okay, well, I guess he wouldn't lie. Huh. Did he decide to take the fall for Cavanella? Because he'd already killed somebody and had that on his conscience? I wonder. Lynn looks like she's about to rip into the Justice Minister. I think she's forgotten all about me. I think I'll send her a little signal. <laughs> Cecil! There you are! Sounds like the Minister is being very stubborn. That's right, he is! Maybe we shouldn't have saved him after all. The Minister has to have... The minister has to have the execution carried out tonight, and he has a very good reason for it. A good reason? I told Lynn about what I had learned about the kidnapping. Kidnapping? They kidnapped the justice minister's daughter? Apparently. Oh my goodness! But still... That's still no reason to hurry forward with the execution. Why don't you go ahead and say that to the Justice Minister, then? Oh, the poor man. I hate to do that to him. Oh, by the way. Do you think you could carry me? Oh, right, sure. Not very handy, is it? Having no legs. See, it's funny because it's handy. Hands, legs, feet. None of these are things Sissel has. Har har. Oh, can I talk to her? This sword and globe combo is heavy. And I'm in here too, don't forget. I guess that means a single soul is heavier than the whole world. I don't think that's what that means, but okay. Maybe I'll use this thing to persuade the minister to change his mind. Good luck with that. What are you going to do with that globe? Crack me in the head with it. Oh, this? Uh, <laughs> pay no attention to this. It's kind of hard not to pay attention to it. By the way, and please pardon me if this is a silly question. Were you talking to somebody just now? But of course not, right? I mean, there's no such thing as ghosts, right? Are you talking about me? No, there's no such thing. This is a dream. It's nothing but a dream. The world saber would be a cool sword. No, that's true. Don't you remember me? My dream is talking to me. Huh, so now I'm a dream, eh? Mr. Minister? We know. We know about your daughter. She was kidnapped, wasn't she? And if the execution doesn't take place tonight, you won't see her again. Gah! Gah! Your medicine! Medicine! Gah! Oh, what am I going to do? The death row prisoner has escaped. If he isn't executed tonight. My daughter! My Amelie! But what if that execution isn't the right thing to do? Ah. Come on, Lynn. If you keep pressing him like that, he's gonna die again. <laughs> like how casual we are about that. There's no big deal he might die again like he did last time, you know. What can I do then? What can we do? We have to do something about that kidnapping. Until we do that, it'll be impossible to get the minister on our side. That's the way I see it. I think I'll start by gathering info on the kidnapping. In the only way I know how. Telephone. We're talking to him. Let's talk to him. We meet again, Mr. Minister. What? I've never seen you before. In any case, I'm a very busy man. If you're a dream, please don't bother me when I'm awake. Uh, I'm not a dream. 
Looks like it's just a waste of time trying to talk to this guy. I think you're right, stubborn justice minister. Please stop speaking ill of me inside my own head. You do plenty of that, buddy. Don't you think there's something fishy about this kidnapping thing? Fishy? I mean, the demand is to carry out an execution that was already set to be carried out. It's just like the minister said. There's no need for such a kidnapping. Hmm, you might be right. Are you talking to somebody again? No, no, there's no such thing. No such thing. I'm a realist. I'll never believe in them. Not in the existence of ghosts, not in this escape from prison, and not in this kidnapping. Huh, this realist is running away from several very real facts. At high speed, too. Anyway, let me try and find out more about this kidnapping. After all, I know where the kidnappers are. Oh, that's right. You have their telephone number. I think I'll go see what these kidnappers look like. And are we ready to ring the sizzle phone? No. No, we're not. Two. See if there's... Okay. Okay, so it's the same... No. Same dialogue options. Okay. I just have to double check that there's not going to be extra. Lynn looks very thoughtful. She is concerned. I love that there's just a sword with a globe attached to it. No big deal. You can't expect me not to do this. You know better. Wait. What's the matter, Ray? Taking a break? He's not moving. Haha, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I'm apparently starting to lose my strength. But what? Let me ask you one favor first, if you don't mind. There's a small creature who needs your... There's a small creature who needs your powers. Missile, 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 missile. Oh, you're talking about the little lady, aren't you? Oh, okay. Maybe not, but they're together. She holds a clue to that which you seek. I encourage you to lend her your strength. How do you know all this? You'll find out soon enough. I know you can do it. Hurry along now. There's no time to waste. Okay, I'm going. All right. I think the little girl's probably with Camila. Just like before. I don't see the little girl here anywhere. So does this mean she was really kidnapped? In spite of the fact that her husband and daughter are in trouble, the novelist types passionately on. But I don't get it. How did the kidnappers get a hold of the little girl? Through the telephone lines I go. There's so much tension in here. I've never felt anything like this before. I better find out more about this kidnapping as quickly as I can before the minister dies of anxiety. Nah. <laughs> Look, look, I am what I am. Okay, there's nothing here. We're just gonna go through real quick. But Ray has let us know that Camila and Missile are gonna need our help soon. So we're gonna do that. Oh man, is the panic dance still going? Is the panic dance still going? 
Panic dance, panic dance. Also, I'm surprised that uh, Cabanella hasn't called in to report, you know? Looks like the panic, sta panic dance is still going. Okay, so Bailey asked what will stop, the panic dance or the world spinning? It's possible the world will stop spinning because I'm convinced that these blue people might have something to do that's existential at the state of the planet. Well, we'll see. That would be funny, wouldn't it? I told my para para friend about a game with a para para dance in it. He was he was delighted. Yeah, see? You see those things right there? Those dolls? I'm looking at this right now to see if there are any other similarities, but that is definitely a similarity. See, it was, wasn't it worth coming here for that? If for no other reason? They probably have fewer uh, of these little things than they do chapters in case you miss one or two chapters. Um, you can still get the whole thing. I don't know if there's going to be any other scenes. Cabanella should be calling in that he's caught Joe, though. Para Para is um, a Eurobeat dance style that was popularized by a Bimani series of rhythm games. You gonna yell at me for going back to the core charge, Sissel? Alright, folks, it's time to progress the plot. Let's do it. God, I love the theme. I really should pay the kidnappers hideout a visit. After all, if we want the Justice Minister to come around, we have to solve this problem first. I feel like I'm slowly moving away from my own mystery. But I'm not the kind of guy who can abandon a little lady in trouble. So I guess I'm in this for a little while longer. Alright, cleared chapter 10. Oh man, it is now past midnight. Elegy of a gentleman. Save your current place in time. Continue playing? Yes, even though this is a bad time, we've got 15 minutes left or so of the stream. We can, we, can, we can get started. We can see what's happening over here. The justice minister's daughter has been abducted. The kidnappers demand the execution of the death row prisoner Jode to be carried out tonight. Lynn says the execution is a mistake and I believe her. And so I'm paying the kidnappers hideout a visit to see what I can, to see what I can find out about the abduction. What took you so long? Your instinct was right, beauty, my dear. They had that restaurant surrounded. It took me forever to shake them, and now my poor bike is ready for the scrappy. Next time, maybe you should make it a tricycle so you don't hurt yourself. Ouch, that hurts, beauty. But that's okay. That's what I love about you. what's in the basement it looks exactly like it it looks exactly like it there's the doll right here with the candle and the everything that's bizarre be a little more gentle with our valuable hostage please hostage in the case Yes, yes. Always keep a smile on a lady's face, right, my dear? 
There, see that beauty? Now there's a smile blooming on your face too, my dear. Yes, a wry smile. I'm going out for a breath of fresh air. You're on guard duty. All right, I'll dream of you until you return. Why don't you open the trunk for our guest? I will, beauty. I was just taking a little breather. All right, little lady. Let me open that trunk for you. Dot, dot, dot. That played the birthday song, though. Beauty. Oh, he fell asleep. It looks like the justice minister's daughter really has been kidnapped. And something else is bothering me, too. This, yeah. I don't think I've ever been to this room before. But something about it has given me a strange sense of deja vu. I've seen something like this before. You don't say. Taking something precious to manipulate others. So that's what kidnapping is. The dirty tricks those without the powers of the dead come up with. However, if I take that precious thing back, their power vanishes, doesn't it? Now then, time to see how the justice minister's little girl is doing before this guy wakes up from his dream of beauty. Okay, I know I just did this, but we are in a new chapter. I'm so sorry that I'm doing this again, but not sorry enough to not do it, unless somebody can confirm for me that there are absolutely no more scenes. Dot, dot, dot. Hey, why so quiet? Dot, dot, dot. Ray? Dot, dot, dot. What's going on? Maybe he isn't here anymore. I guess he did say it, and it's past midnight, so I guess that makes sense. Well, that is sad for Ray. I wonder what- I guess we'll find out what his story is. Cicel is running up the phone bill, yes. Nothing new here. Running up the phone line. Yeah, I don't know that there's going to be anything else, but we're going to try it anyway. Does ghost travel use up a lot of data? I don't know. I don't know. Well, no, because the guy here had seen... He had seen Camila, I thought. Because he's looking for Camila. Hmm. Aha! Looks like the old pigeon guy decided to go somewhere else. There's something very off about this place. Old dusty junk side by side with well-maintained equipment. Anyway, it doesn't look like things are going to change here much for a while. All right, but the basement, man. I'm going to look at that room and hopefully I have something to say. White fire, oh my God. Oh, look at that! Panic dance has stopped. The chief is on his way over here. What's he want to come now for? Well, because the death row inmate escaped, of course. Oh, I'd hate to be in your shoes right now, Bailey. You're in charge, after all. Arg! And he poses. Me? Oh, why did I ever have to become a prison guard? I never would have taken a job like this if I knew the prisoners might escape. Why do you think they, they need guards? Wow, unbelievable. Yes, I know, right? It is unbelievable. 
Thanks, Bailey. All right. Well, we know that the uh, the head cop is going over there. I guess the world did stop spinning because we stopped the globe. That is a good point, Mothrax. You are right. I sense somebody's presence in this dimly lit place. Oh man, are we gonna get a hint of like, oh, this room looks just like the room at the kidnapper's place? Let's see. Ah. Tonight is probably our last chance. If he doesn't come here tonight. Huh, I think this silence is starting to get to me. This old man is apparently waiting for somebody. The only thing waiting for me is the end of my existence. Right, I can't do anything in here. But I can point out that it looks the same in a lot of ways. That's really interesting. Okay. All right. There probably won't be anything else, but I'm glad that happened. Okay, so the chief won't be at the chief's place. <laughs> Rube Goldberg, happy birthday device. Yes. It's just a classic. Timeless, really. <clears throat> I guess the chief went out. He didn't even put on his shoes. Did something happen? Yeah, we know where he's going. All right. It is nice that they have these little details everywhere. Oh, the chef's not here. Huh, it's not like the restaurant is closed. Where's the chef? It's just not the same without his singing. I guess I can come back later if I want to hear him sing again. Where did Cabanella take Jode? Like, you would think he would have called it in. But he didn't. So he's up to something. I don't know what he's up to, but he's up to something. Why do the kidnappers want Joe dead? I wonder. What can he do? Decoration. We're going to set the decoration on fire. Maybe. Huh. Whenever I possess a door like this, for some reason I get the urge to send something flying with it. Yeah, I did notice that. These ghost tricks are kind of addictive. got this birthday thing going on. A ball that rolls off a table. I've already seen something like this once already tonight. I wonder if this ball does anything. Let's see what happens when we're over here on this side. Scots can shake the shelf, which will send the mantle clock down. <clears throat> well, we can see what happens when we uh, hit the ball.
I don't think that that did much, but we did it. All right, so we're over here now. reach my destination from here. Party popper, cake box, party popper. What does this do? Oh, that woke him up. Just my imagination. Just my imagination, that's all he has to say. If he was any more laid back, he'd fall right off that crate. But look at that streamer go spinning round and round. Now how can I make use of that? back to sleep. Party popper. Okay. Just my imagination. That's all he has to say. What an amazingly simple fellow. This room, on the other hand, is starting to look amazingly festive. The question is, how can I use it to my advantage? I'm going to spin the balance toy and cause the ball to move. if I do this. This is one of those things you light with fire, isn't it? <laughs> it's a candle. As long as there's light in the room, is something like this really necessary? But if something can be lit, it kind of makes me want to light it. I need another core to reach the trunk and open it. I wonder if I can create a new core. shelf is suspended by very thin cords. They look like they're about to break. I bet it'd be quite a spectacle if it fell. If something can break, it kind of makes me want to break it. I'm not sure what else I can do here. Oh, hold on. I, I am actually sure what I can do here. I don't know how to get there, but... How do I get back up? Ah, here we go. Up. We're gonna raise this. We're gonna burn. Ah, shoot. It's the wrong way. There we go. We're gonna burn it. When the flame gets really big like this, for some reason I get the urge to burn something. Unfortunately, everything is just out of the flame's reach. Oh, 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 okay. Got it. Yes, Sissel is a fan of property damage, much like me. supposed to do there. Okay, so now we've got that. Oh, I think I'm going to raise, yeah, I'm going to raise this. 
And that's going to catch it on fire. And that's going to catch that on fire. Ha! It's just my imagination. Oh my god, this guy. Man, this guy. You ready to open this trunk? Alright, is it gonna be Camila? Is it gonna be the actual minister's daughter? Or is it gonna be Missile? <laughs> or Missile and Camila? We'll find out. They might have got the wrong little girl. Let's find out. Yep. <laughs> She's just reading a book. What in the... What's going on here? This little lady is... Is this little lady really a daughter of the justice minister? Oh, shoot. Yeah, she's a cup holder. She's very relaxed. What's with the fun book and juice? Like I said, always keep a smile on a lady's face. I wanted to treat our guest well. How about treating me well? I'd like some bread and milk, please. What, are you the fairies? Are you the fae? You leave out a bowl of bread and milk for the fae. Depending on what kind of creature they are. At your service, my dear. Be back in a flash. Hey, mister. Yes, cute little lady. More juice, perhaps? All you have to do is ask. Have I been kidnapped? Don't cry, little dear. There's nothing to be afraid of. The surroundings are miserable and filthy, I know, but we just ask for a little patience. Don't say those awful things about this house. Huh? This house is... Where I used to live. I'm pretty sure she's Jode's daughter. What? I apologize, little lady. I'm the one who's miserable and filthy. Forgive me. What's the meaning of this beauty? Why here at this girl's old house? Don't ask me. It was the other party in our deal who chose this location. Oh. Oh, I see. It's been empty for five years, and apparently nobody ever comes here. Never mind that. What about my bread and milk? Oh, of course. Now you be a good girl while I'm gone. You just read your book and drink your juice. I want to go home. Not quite yet. This dilapidated place was Camila's old house. What's going on here? <sighs> okay, so I had wondered, I had thought that maybe the weird thing in the basement was trying to figure out what like the aliens are up to but now I'm wondering actually if it's a recreation of a crime scene of sorts trying to get into the head of for example Jode the kitchen has been wrecked you can see because there was a birthday party that was happening I guess five years ago when Camila's mom, I guess, was killed, if she is, in fact, Jode's daughter, which I think she is. It's just all very strange. There are pieces that I don't quite understand and I'm very curious about. However, we should... What in the world? Sorry, I hit the wrong button, but I've, gotten... I've activated a scene. Sorry. She has a core. She's not supposed to have a core unless she's died and I've spoken to her before.
was she killed that night five years ago and Cecil was there. Why does the little lady have a core of the dead? When I helped her out at Lynn's apartment, she didn't have one. Okay, okay. So that must mean she must have died sometime after that. And it also means somebody else must have saved her. Who else has a power of the dead? Ray? I better ask her what happened. Well, I wanted to shut down for the night because we're past 10 o'clock and I'm tired. But I also really want to know what the deal is. What do we do? Can we wait? No. No, I don't know that we can. A book. I wonder what the little lady is reading tonight. An exciting adventure story, maybe? Although she's already getting quite a bit of excitement for one day. Somewhere along the way, Camila must have died. What could have happened to her? I'd better ask her. Could it be there's somebody else with the powers of the dead besides me? Maybe so. Let's have a conversation and find out. Who's there? Oh, wait a minute. Is that you, Missile? Missile? I'm sorry. I'm not Missile. My name's Sissel. Almost the same as Missile. Sissel? My name is Camila. Camila. So it is her. I knew it. What happened to me? What is this place? I can hardly tell the poor little thing. This is the land of the dead. The land of the dead? Does that mean I'm dead? Darn, I forgot there are no secrets in the ghost world. That's very interesting. You can relax. You're not dead. But this isn't the first time you've been here, apparently. Really? I don't remember. Wait a minute. Maybe I do remember, sort of. You do? It looks like she doesn't remember being saved very well. Hmm. So there's some other dead person out there with special powers, eh? Anyway, I don't want to press her if she doesn't remember anything. If she doesn't remember dying. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about something else? Sure. Go ahead, sissy. Oh my god, she's given him a nickname. Sissy, eh? Um. <coughs> Kidnapping. Lynn asked me to do something for her tonight. I know about that part. She asked you to go to the chicken kitchen on Dead End Drive, right? Yeah, but I never got there. Now I wish I could say I'm sorry to her. I never should have gone through that park. What park? Tamsik Park. It's a shortcut to Dead End Drive. Kismet. Backwards. That means fate, if I remember correctly. Is that where the kidnappers grabbed you? Yeah, Lynn always said, I don't like that park. Scary things happen there. Tempsic Park, eh? What am I going to do? Lynn's going to be so mad. She is? How come? Because I left it there. The music box in the park. That's right, the music box. The music box is hidden in the apartment. I finally found it with a little bit of luck and courage and help for me. Guess where it was? Huh, I don't know where. We'll pretend I don't know. You know, you don't have to humor me. Oops. So what happened to the music box? I hid it in the bushes at the park just before it happened. Just before, oh, just before you were kidnapped, huh? I didn't want the bad man to take it, so I hid it. I bet it's still there in the park. You did well. So the music box is in the park. I'd better let Lynn know. Let's talk to Camila. This is your old house? Yep, this is where I lived until five... This is where we lived until five years ago. But now I live with Lynn and Missile. Lynn is like a big sister to you, isn't she? Yep, she's a detective, you know. She's a hero. She is, huh? By the way, about your father... 
Is he the justice minister? Dot, dot, dot. My father is gone. Gone? Maybe he passed away. No, that's not it. My dad, he's going to die. And it's all because of me. What? What do you mean because of me? Why would you say that? It's called an execution. My dad is a detective. No way. Don't tell me your father is Detective Jowd. That's right. What in the world? Five years ago, something really bad happened. Like a scary dream, but it wasn't a dream. Five years ago, that murder case. Well, incident five years ago. It was mom's birthday that day. My mom and dad were working and I was home by myself. And then I had an idea. I was going to surprise my mom. Did she accidentally cause her mother's death? And he took the fall so that nothing would happen to her? Oh my god. That's really dark. I set up that contraption. I'm home, Camila. Why is it dark? What was that noise? I still can't believe it happened. It wasn't supposed to work like that. Huh, I know that contraption. And I know how it was supposed to work. Party poppers and a cake, a birthday message. My dad told me not to tell anybody. Just leave it to me, he said. My dad wanted to be executed. He asked them for it. But I wanted to tell everybody it was my fault. My dad said what I saw was a bad dream. He told me to forget it. This is all so unbelievably tragic. I can't believe it. This little lady is Detective Joad's daughter. I just can't tell her. I can't tell her why she was kidnapped. Why was I kidnapped? I want to know. Sissel's really not good at this. <coughs> Oops. There are no secrets in the ghost world. Maybe we'd better stop talking. It's too dangerous. Sissy, you're not going to talk to me anymore? I think we'd better get you out of here first. We can talk more after that. Okay, but I'm going to rescue you now. You just hold on a little longer, all right? Dot, dot, dot. Okay, but we'll talk later, right? Don't forget, you promised, sissy. Updated the phone book. Yeah, I'll bet you updated the phone book, Mr. Sissel. What took you so long? I traveled the entire town in search of the finest bread and milk for you, my dear. But it's late and all the shops are closed. We're leaving this place right now. What? But he's not here yet. If we couldn't meet at the restaurant, where were we supposed to meet here? Yes, and he's the one who chose this location. <laughs> I don't like this one bit. We have to run around doing all this extra work, all for the sake of his deal. Be quiet. It can't be helped. This place is too dangerous. I told you, my sixth sense is very strong. All right, as you wish, beauty. I feel it. I sense something here in this room. Is it me? Or is there something else? 
somebody there. Can you hear me? Is she talking to me? I can sense your presence, you know. The next time I sense you, this child will die. Remember that. Okay, she has psychic powers. So, not ordinary human. All right, we're leaving. Pardon me, little lady. Oh no, our book. That can't be a very comfortable way to be carried. All of a sudden, I'm left behind alone. Alone in the room that stole that little lady's smile away five years ago. The little lady is gone now, leaving me with only a few new facts. A few very heavy, very...